this takes weekend with Swamini Vijananda. Uh, as you know, Swamini Ji will be taking questions at the end of the session. Please type your questions at the in the Q&A chat box and not on the chat box. Uh, so with this very, very small brief remarks, uh, I request Swamini Ji to start the session. Om Bhadrang Karnamishnayama Devaha Bhadram Pashye Makshavher Yajatraha Sthirai Rangai Istuttuvagam Sastano Bhihi Vyashema Devahi Tanyadayuhu Swastina Indro Vridha Shravaha Swastina Pusha Vishwavedaha Swastina Starkshyo Arishta Nemihi Swastino Brahaspatir Dadhatu Om Shanti 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 Om Sahana Vavatu Sahana Bhunaktu Sahaviryam Karavavahai Tejasvinavadhi Tamas Toma Vidvishavahai Om Shanti 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 So we have been having a very involved discussion on the understanding of uh, Shraddha, the concept of Shraddha, how to assimilate this because you know as the Bhagavad Gita also says it is by far the you know the most salient uh, important qualification for gaining self-knowledge because without this Shraddha nothing else is possible and you know because one has to have trust in the source that is you know that is the uh, giving uh, that is the removing the ignorance and so therefore this uh, shraddha becomes very important because without trusting the source you cannot go any further no nothing can be done and uh, you know the the trust in the source is difficult why because you don't operate that source <laughs> that source is the Veda uh, you know handled by a teacher then that's what converts it into a pramana so to speak and handled by a teacher then it comes to you and then so therefore it's it feels like somebody from outside is telling me what to do many people you know today in the morning somebody said I don't feel like that good for you wonderful if you don't feel like that but some people do feel like that and and uh, it's and especially in the West this is a difficult thing because one has not grown up in the tradition of parampara guru you know guru shishya all these things this is these are all uh, you know uh, relatively uh, you know alien concepts and something that one has to grow into and so therefore the, the 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 what comes in the way this is what we have to see now is what comes in the way for this shraddha to take place is distrust because if shraddha is trust then what is there you know what is the antidote to shraddha that is distrust this is what is the antithesis of shraddha is distrust and so distrust on what distrust uh, you know centered on the source that is giving me the knowledge that is where, where the distrust lies and the distrust is centered usually on the teacher or on the parampara you know on, and the feeling is that how do I know that this person knows you know I call it guru allergy you know <laughs> the person has no problem seeking a teacher for you know what is that dance class classes cooking classes <laughs> cooking gurus are there, music gurus are there, dance gurus are of course there, stock market person is also called stock market guru these days <laughs> and if all of them is not enough there is one life guru, life coach is called, I met one fellow like that and uh, he's retained by celebrities he told me uh, for a monthly fee a very fat fee so they can call him anytime from morning to night they can keep on calling him 
and then you know if they are having a wa- what is called a wardrobe malfunction meaning they don't know what to wear they have so many clothes <laughs> their closet their cupboard is like a bedroom in the in india okay so <laughs> then uh, they don't know what to wear and they call the person because they don't know you know they they, they cannot handle their own life it's the it's the problem of of excess uh, not the problem of scarcity and then you know the um, so the life guru so people are not worried about seeking help we can see that in the world everybody is seeking some help from somebody or the other you have tutors you have gurus of all kinds for all various things but then when it comes to the most important thing which is knowing yourself there is suddenly one develops hives rashes you know because <laughs> the guru becomes very very you know like oh my god what 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 are they going to do how are they going to do this you know and this is where this is why shraddha is talked about a lot in the veda including in the sama veda we have this beautiful you know mantra rathantara sama gana and there you know shraddhaya shraddha the, the 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 this is what is uh, you know told setum stara dustaran setum stara cross this bridge which is very difficult to cross what is difficult to cross ashraddha ashraddha means lack of shraddha absence of shraddha opposite of shraddha any which way you take it you know and you know so this ashraddha you know is very difficult to to to, to overcome so tara means overcome how do i overcome ashraddha by building the bridge of shraddha by by you know introducing the opposite and by pretending to have shraddha i learn i deliberately then cultivate shraddha and since shraddha is one's natural nature natural you know way of being un uh, you know inhibited by anything from the past and inhibited by all kinds of you know difficulties it is one's way of being and so uh, one's nature and so it's easy you know you look at a baby it has shraddha it has so that any you know anybody will pick it up it will go it the, that the total helplessness is compensated by complete trust whoever the adult is if they it will just go you know i'm talking for really small baby not uh, when it is 9 or 10 months it knows oh who are you you're not my mother you're not my father it will say so but a small baby will just go to anybody and that is you know that is what the whole thing is so here the cultivation of trust is a very very important you know uh, you know uh, what is that interruption to you know shastra allergy guru allergy so why does this guru allergy come i mean you don't even know the guru so why do you distrust the guru why would anybody distrust the guru why does this resistance distrust and fear come up it is part of the you know uh, what is that uh um, regurgitation of authority issues from the past everybody has authority issues correct issues with authorities means what parental issues because the guru always somehow reminds one of you know uh, you know like a like a is like a parent apparently the guru doesn't want to parent you <laughs> but you know this there is some kind of a connection with the guru like a parent a parent like connection and so it invokes all the difficulties that one may have had with with the parents and it invokes those particular issues the, so and those issues have to be settled have to settle down and those issues have to be addressed and those issues have to be uh, you know taken care of taken care of means resolved those issues have to be resolved properly and when those issues are finally resolved then the person is prepared like ashvalayana was you know he had no doubt he chose the teacher and then it, uh, the, the whole uh, knowledge lined up for him but we have to see the truth of this the truth of this is you know it's it's very very obvious 
as a child maybe the mother was absent father was neglectful or inconsistent whatever you know hypothetically speaking and all that leaves an impression and that impression is hidden thanks to maya shakti this is the personal avarna this is the personal unconscious that one carries you know and so the, the all these issues are hidden and they come out when there is safety you are you finally feel safe enough to feel unsafe <laughs> you know yeah and usually they come out after a marriage because you know somebody has committed to spending their life with you <laughs> then that gives you a certain trust and trust and intimacy means what you, you know you trust them enough to show them your pain you know so you show them the pain and then you know so you want you know you want all these inner children which are in the form of these st- truncated pains and sorrows to be taken care of by the significant other not a good idea to outsource them to baby for the significant other to babysit why because the significant other also has his or her own brood of inner children that he or she wants you to babysit <laughs> okay i'll babysit you will not and then the other person will not you know that's what is called the end of the honeymoon period for a little while it's okay you know after that it becomes very 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 you know difficult you have to deal with your own inner child by being the adult having that space between yourself and the you know and the inner child the inner child means this pain body the body of pain the body of feeling neglectful neglected the body that feels you know nobody loves me abandoned you know the body that has no self esteem the body that is these are all you know truncated needs the uh, frozen needs unmet needs that are just put upon you know the teacher the significant other the teacher is another very kind of a you know a close connection an intimate situation a close connection and so the trust builds up along with all the expectations so one wants the teacher to be a father you know one wants the teacher to give what the father could not give what the mother could not give this is you know this is part of the natural ishwara's psychological order this is part of the psychological order there is nothing wrong but to recognize that this is wisdom you know that to recognize this and to seek help is wisdom because if this help is not sought if these things are not resolved there is an inner split between the adult and the inner child and then the adult wants the knowledge and the inner child wants to complain and the inner child wants a hug you know wants attention wants love from the source of knowledge this is or wants to hang out with the guru uh, but the adult wants the knowledge and this all this our sages knew our sages were masters of raga dvesha psychology every single psychology inner child psychology you know it was amazing and we find this in the 8th chapter of the chandogya upanishad where indra the 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 ruler of all the gods ruler of heaven and uh, uh, you know virochana the ruler of the asuras together go to prajapati here it is lord brahma ji there it is prajapati for knowledge they hear uh, you know prajapati sends out a tweet and what does the tweet say atma apahata papma vijarah vimrityu vishokah you know kshutpi pasa vihinah meaning atma is free of all papa you are free of all papa you know vijarah you are free of old age vimrityu you are free of death you have transcended death your nature is not to die you are immortal and all this they hear it sounds wonderful and and they they both you know uh, the the asuras also say i think somebody should go and get this knowledge you know and then somebody should go to prajapati i think he is talking sense and of course the asuras wanted this knowledge for a different reason they wanted it for world domination <laughs> and then what about uh, the you know 
uh, uh, the, the suras, the, the various devatas on this side, the goodies, not the baddies. So the goodies said, no, no, we should get this knowledge for our own sake and we'll appoint Indra because he is our ruler and we trust him and he will bring the knowledge back and teach all of us. So they go, they trot off together. I mean, they are arch enemies. They cannot stand each other. And whether they talk, they, they both go, whether they talked and exchanged their chapatis on the way, we, do, we never know. <laughs> you know, in the, the Upanishad is silent on the question. But they both show up at Prajapati's ashram at the same time. And what is very interesting is that, you know, the, um, the, uh, the, the uh, only Indra talks. Virochana does not talk at all. Virochana is like a copycat. Copycat Asura. Indra does Namaskar to Prajapati. Virochana also does Namaskar to Prajapati. Indra, you know, says, you know, whatever and Virochana keeps quiet and just agrees. The funny thing is, both these fellows go to the ashram and for 32 years they live there and you know, without even you know, asking for this knowledge. They just go about, they just insert themselves into the ashram. And Prajapati must have been a very patient guru because he lets them live there for 32 years eating, drinking, doing nothing, you know. And then after that, he asks them, Hey boys, what are you here for? What do you hope to get? Again, Indra answers. And then after a while, you know, the Prajapati just mystifies them on deliberately because he sees these two, he sees these two people. One of them is an Adhikari, qualified. The other one is a non-Adhikari, full of Raga, Dvesha, etc. You know, etc. He's a non-Adhikari. And so therefore what? So, Prajapati cannot teach and so he just uh, show, shows them a, a cauldron of water and says please look at the Atma, this is the Atma and they both go away satisfied. But then Indra because of you know Sattva Patti, because he has a lot of Sattva comes back, he questions this and comes back. And only then the teaching starts after he loses his Virochana. <laughs> Virochana is a symbolic, is symbolic of this inner child. Ah. So the unresolved asura within, or you can even say asuras, because this is after all Kali Yuga, it cannot be simple. It cannot just, one cannot just have one inner child. <laughs> so there will be lots of them. This is what the whole thing is. And to, and to have this, you know, to, to transcend this, uh, what is that, you know, the hold of the inner child. Some work is needed, some inner work is needed. That is why, the, the you know, the word Shraddha is followed up by Bhakti and Dhyana. Bhakti and Dhyana together become a certain kind of a sadhana. And in fact, bhakti includes dhyana because after all it is manasam, karma, it is a mental, uh, you know, activity for whose topic, whose subject matter is uh, Ishvara. After all, that is the case. But bhakti and dhyana are mentioned separately because bhakti includes, you know, many things which we are going to talk about. So this is what the sentence was, tasmai cha ho vaja, tasmai cha ho vaja, Pita Mahascha Shraddha Bhakti Dhyana Yogat Avaihi Avaihi Janihi And please know this how through a combo Yoga means Tesham Yoga Shraddha Cha Bhakti Cha Dhyana Cha Tesham Yoga Shraddha Bhakti Dhyana Yoga Tasmat Avaihi Shraddha Bhakti Dhyana Yogat Avehi. So please, please know this. And how do you know this? You know this by a, it is a concerted co combination of sadhana here. Remember what we have talked about so far. The sadhana does not produce the knowledge. Sadhana only prepares for the Atma Ajnanam to say goodbye and to go away. Sadhana does not produce the knowledge. Sadhana produces, if anything, a state of mind that is conducive to gaining this knowledge. This is what we have to remember. But 
without sadhana there can be no knowledge because this, this is a prerequisite you know if you want to go to college you have to have a high school degree then if you want to do phd you have to have at least a bachelor's degree master many times a master's degree then if you want to do post doc you have to have a doctorate then only you can do a post doc you cannot you know get out of high school and what are, what are your plans i think i'll do a post doc oh you have thought so far ahead no i think i'll do it right now <laughs> you know unless you're belonging you you unless you're a gifted person belonging to some genius club this is not an option you have to go step by step and so here you what comes what is a pratibandha pratibandhaka for shraddha what is a very difficult uh, you know um, uh, you know condition to cultivate shraddha the distress the clamoring inner children for attention the transference and the projection uh, all these things is this this mishmash of pain pain from early childhood you know that is what is unresolved pain from early childhood is showing up that too is ishvara if we ishvarize it you know who oh, is that a word now it is so if you ishvarize the pain then you know you see only bhagavan and how to ishvarize the pain this is what is the next word bhakti bhakti you know here bhakti bhaj sevayam you know bhajate sevate sevate here means in the sense of not just you know worship the first course let us take the most straight forward meaning bhakti means worship of ishvara ishvara aradhana is called bhakti worship of bhagavan in whatever name whatever form you have whatever you know uh, however you do it and uh, you know and then since it is a karma there are many 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 different ways of ha- uh, of you know performing this bhakti bhakti is is only as good as it is performed bhakti relies on karma for on action for its performance and up till now the the person was what karta bhokta karta bhokta we saw that in the first session itself like you know somebody sent me uh, a a a video of this three kittens you know small kittens and they were watching they were sitting somewhere all three of them and they were watching one ping pong match two boys were playing and then they were going like this all in sync sync you know like this it was very interesting and that's when i thought karta bhokta karta bhokta karta bhokta back and forth you know all the time and in the case of the kittens it was cute you know in the case of this person who is you know going like a ping pong ball karta bhokta karta bhokta karta bhokta in between pramata karta bhokta karta bhokta manta thinker karta bhokta karta bhokta something else you know and so this is very uh, difficult and you know if supposing the you had the you know ability to produce the result of action which you don't and bhagavan says this very plainly karmani eva adhikar hate ma bhaleshu kadachana you don't produce the result of action very interesting and a funny situation it's a trap it's a it's an action trap action reaction trap because you are in charge of only one side of the, the, the equation and the other side you cannot produce the result of action but you are in charge of action e kya baat hai this is very you know not fair at all this is very unfair you may say and so therefore what so now we have to see that okay if you were in charge of producing the result of action if all the people who were uh, agents of actions who were identified as kartas were able to produce the result of action then we would not need the upanishad at all we would not need devotion we would not need shraddha forget dhyanam how do you spell that we don't need anything why because we are in charge of our lives i want 1 million dollars you know and i get it and then you know somebody else wants to own another corporation they also get it somebody wants to you know do something else go bungee cord jumping sky diving they do it with that they don't break any bones they don't do any nothing bad happens because one is exactly how much effort one puts that much result they get then there is no need for upanishad no need for prayer no need for devotion 
but the reason why this ping pong between karta bhokta karta bhokta is happening is because one precisely because there is a sense of helplessness you cannot fulfill the desires you cannot get rid of the discontent very easily you cannot produce what you want in fact what you don't want two two helpings you get what you want you never get this is this is the what is called murphy's law if anything is going to go wrong in your life it definitely will go wrong this is the situation but then you know here you know bhakti again you know is you know as i told you we already touched upon bhakti when we talked about the first portion of the veda bhakti again you know remints you redefines you as a conscious agent because that's the only recourse why because you can take care of the hidden va- the, the 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 visible variables you're going for a job interview and then you 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 know read up on job you find out all your experiences you put together a resume you apply you are called for an interview you find out who all is in on the panel to interview you and then you re- google them up and then find out everything about them all this you it's a, you you have done but you go there the job has already been given to whom to the uh, to the niece of the ceo <laughs> an inside job literally why you know her karma your bad karma this that's all it is but i really wanted it in when the better luck next time that's all it is why hidden variable this is what is the pratibandhaka and the hidden variable is not sort of thrown like a curved ball by ishvara it ishvara doesn't have any dvesha or hatred towards you the hidden variable is your own karma done in a previous life which is mounting all kinds of difficulties right now that's what the whole thing is so is there a parihara is there a remedy yes there is and this is what it is bhakti here devotion devotion for what you know devotion here is of two kinds one is you know devotion for all all my kamyas objects of desire this is what the devotion people are uh, you know people are familiar with when i am in trouble i think of bhagavan when i am having a difficult time i think of bhagavan when i want something badly i think of bhagavan you know like during exam time here you know in india the temples are all full of youth before the exams they will all go there otherwise you never see them you know so this is what the whole thing is nothing wrong very important this is a this is a starting point this is what is the, the first expression of this bhakti uh, you know according to uh, the bhagavad gita is called artha bhakti it's a 911 devotion 911 is the number for emergency in uh, america yeah so it's a 911 you know the, the person has bhagavan on speed dial and emergency time just like when you don't call 911 every day to chat with the operator hi how are you is your day going well are you having a very day, busy day how are things over there how many accidents today you don't do that you only call in desperate times and then so this 911 bhakta udara hai he he or she is also exalted bhagavan says because there should be a starting point and from there one graduates slowly to a more evolved bhakti perhaps in the beginning there is more of a pragmatic evolution like one sees okay bhagavan controls everything he is the karta dharta niyanta he is the controller of the whole universe so i better invoke bhagavan and then one has a some kind of a you know uh, what is that partnership you please be the sleeping partner <laughs> you know bhagavan is laughing even vishnu who is normally lying down is laughing you know <laughs> because bhagavan doesn't sleep shayane sarvam bibharti you know <laughs> lying down without stress you know sustains the whole universe but anyhow you don't do anything this fellow says and i will just call my uh, you know my company i'll name it after you balaji enterprises and then what and then uh, you know 50% is yours i'll go to tirupati 
when it opens and right now it's closed so when it opens i'll go and then i'll put some 50% of all the profits there and as though bhagwan is feeling very happy oh i'm going to get some donation i'm going to get some money no such thing there is no flattery there there is nothing possible that's why bhagwan becomes a very apt altar of surrender then from there one evolves if one allows oneself one evolves into wanting to know bhagwan who are you ki drisho si mahadeva oh bhagwan who are you how are you running this universe what is my connection to you you know did i come from you did you create me or am i one and the same as you what is going on this is again a very different you know because here you are not wanting bhagwan to gain something in life you are wanting bhagwan for the sake of bhagwan this is what is called a jignasu bhakta then finally ultimately the jignasu evolves into what is called a gnani through shravanam what you are doing right now through listening the jignasu evolves into a, a gnani and then the gnani is you know is also a bhakta because the gnani is still in a uh, body mind sense complex and the gnani what does the gnani say the gnani says i you know uh i know that from the standpoint of this body you are everything i see you everywhere and i know you are non separate from me also this is very very beautifully expressed in the bhagavad gita but the need for devotion regardless of where one starts is very very important because even on the very practical level you know what is causing the difficulties in one's life because i said as i said you know there is two ways of uh, you know looking for uh, two ways of worship either you want bhagwan for the sake of bhagwan or you want bhagwan to gain ends in life both are okay but the first, both are valid but the first one wanting bhagwan to gain some ends in life you know what happens they as a result of that if you want bhagwan to gain some ends in life whatever you get is finite but if you want bhagwan himself then what you get is infinite this is what what you get is you because you are that bhagwan ultimately we saw that in, in the earlier class and so therefore you know this 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 is something to be uh, you know assimilated that this bhakti is anivarya meaning it is it is you cannot go without it so every jignasu every mumukshu every seeker of knowledge you know uh, needs to have this devotion ashvalayana is told and if ashvalayana is told such an exalted sage is told to go have shraddha bhakti and do some dhyanam what to talk of all of us you know we better heed this we better heed this advice of uh, lord brahma ji and then you know make bhakti a center piece in one's life and what does that uh, entail making bhakti center piece in one's life means what you know it entails you know let uh, seeing the altar of surrender as a place to put all your pains and sorrows the inner children the fears the tears this is what is you know and all the disappointments where are you going to take it i told you already if you take it to the significant other then after you know significant other will listen after for a couple of times after that the word significant will drop from the relationship <laughs> you will be making the significant other into just other <laughs> yeah they will say i am out of here you are always complaining you don't listen to me you are just keep on talking of yourself who will want to stay with such a person you know the only one who will listen is bhagwan that's why in our iconography in the hindu you know agama shastra what do we have all the deities are happily showing abhaya mudra and they are have ismita hasa they are all smiling even if you abuse them they smile and they are saying don't fear i am here this is abhaya mudra and they're all happily you know uh, smiling and so it is instant psychology 
it is the, the pain of the parents the pain of the significant other the pain of being just a being a jeeva a flotsam and jetsam in the ocean of samsara which is but a notion as i told you but one doesn't know that not knowing that one is going glub 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 i'm i'm drowning i'm drowning and then what and uh, you know bhagavan here you know becomes the super therapist vedanta is also super therapy but before vedanta is discovered bhagavan is the super therapist does agrees with you does just nods and smiles doesn't disagree doesn't judge doesn't chastise this is the place and this bhakti is actually karma it is karma directed you know the the the, dis- the expression of the disappointments directed in the form of worship this is our tradition that's why in the shri rudram we have a this is, you know we have some choice abuses for bhagavan hey point your arrow another way oh rudra tell you know look the neighbor is also not following dharma point the arrow against him or her why are you after me drape you just you you know unfortunate fellow no taridra ni you know neela lohita you've got all these you know red eyes and they're all rolling in their sockets and what a terrible vision you give and what kind of a thing are you doing what are you doing to us how could you do this this is all prayer in the tradition it is just so profound because you know in when this is when the pain is ishwarized when the pain, you know through a ritual called puja kayikam karma through a ritual called you know parayana you know what is that parayana is just the the you know the reading of various mantras the chanting of various mantras is called parayana and puja means a ritualized worship which has certain steps you put the ghee this here you put, do this over there and this is when you do this and then you light the lamp first you offer the fruits then you light the lamp all these things you know there is some krama order is there and so all this and then manasam karma i will not talk of now because that is part of dhyanam which we'll be uh, discussing dhyana yoga we have already you know uh, it's already there mentioned separately so manasam karma vachikam karma both are uh, sorry kaikam karma physicalized action ritual action like putting a garland offering fruits offering you know dressing the deity all these things are you know uh, are there very 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 important and through this one's pains and sorrows recede the inner child this is drishta phala every every action has two kinds of results drishta and adrishta adrishta invisible drishta immediately sensed and what is the drishta phala the, the the inner children go to sleep with pacifiers in their mouth they go to sleep the raga dveshas in the form of the inner children do not bother a bhakta name bhakta pranashyati bhagavan says in the bhagavad gita my my uh, devotee is never ever destroyed my devotee is not destroyed and so name bhakta pranashyati and very very uh, beautiful to hear this and so then what so the uh, you know so this kind of ritualized worship so you know the has the drishta phala the drishta phala is that i'm much more present i'm much more mindful i'm much more aware and i have become a conscious entity i have become an entity that is conscious of my needs and wants and i i am you know going straight to the source for my needs and wants instead of flouting dharma instead of going against you know ethics ethical moral ways of being very beautiful and so important to understand this so so important very very beautiful so this is what is called drishta phala but then there is adrishta phala adrishta means that which is understood or that which manifests itself later that which is which is invisible now adrishta and what is the you know uh, so the so what is the adrishta here the adrishta here is that you know this karma of invoking bhagavan takes away the pratibandhas which were put from the last life prarabdha etc through other forms of karma very interesting how does this how does that happen 
how does it neutralize my papa it neutralizes the papa papa means difficult karma it uh, neutralizes difficult karma bad karma as we say you know how does it neutralize it because the good karma with puja etc bhakt uh, enacting the enactment of bhakti is a good karma why simply because if you are not in front of the altar worshiping for 3 hours you know if the person was not in front of the altar worshiping for 3 hours perhaps they would have been busy gossiping talking ill of somebody robbing a bank who knows what they would be doing <laughs> but at least here they are sitting chanting sahasra nama vishnu sahasra nama how beautiful how nice very very nice and so this is this 1000 names of lord vishnu are being chanted and there is a connection there is a, a awareness of this connection one is bringing ishvara into the into the life one is removing the pains of the past so this is you know all drishta phala adrishta here means you know there is a kind of an effect generated that that effect of that karma you know generated now the good karma attacks the other previous adrishta which is ready to come out and deny this person the next job also after the next interview yeah perhaps the person has had so many missed opportunities missed interviews missed jobs whatever and we we know what happened last time in this hypothetical story the niece of the ceo got it just because she happened to be there and then they made up a story of how she was more qualified and they gave it to her and then what next time they might have been some other thing happening and then you know instead the person prays and then the adrishta of missing the job opportunities and always being on the wrong side of the opportunities you know on the wrong side of every kind of a, a what is that you know any kind of an opening the one is you know either too late or a bit late or whatever it is it's never enough this is the kind of a some karmas are very chronic this is the kind of a chronic karma that is that 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 keeps on go, you know manifesting itself you know or sometimes in certain other karmas karmic patterns the person gets the job but they has to leave it or then you know something happens something is there and that same kind of chronic karma follows one into the pursuit of vedanta also yes possible because what one wants to study one finds the teacher also and one likes the teacher one likes the knowledge very much but some pratibandhas keep coming something happens you know and uh, is not able to make it okay i couldn't make it this time uh, at least in the beginning you know earlier uh, people would physically drive or go somewhere and to sit and listen now you just have to open the computer thanks to advaita academy everybody is online you know <laughs> everybody who is known who is about to be known <laughs> is everybody they have done an excellent job an outstanding job of showcasing authentic teachers this is not a small you know feat not a small feat they have a cornucopia of teachers all you have to do is just click one or two buttons and you are there you know but even to do that some pratibandha comes bell rings phone rings something happens you know there's all kinds of you know distractions and sometimes distractions are not there then you are wondering why nobody is ringing the bell why nobody has called me i've been sitting in the class why you know i am not getting any facebook messages all these things these are all you know these are all the ways in which one becomes one's own mind becomes a pratibandha an obstacle to the knowledge one's own body becomes an ob- obstacle to the knowledge wants to sit and study but as soon as the opening mantra is chanted the person nods off opening mantra becomes a lullaby you know and then you know what and then the closing mantra is a wake up call suddenly the person oh you know is like suprabhatam wake up call and then what to do you know pujya swami ji had a friend like that you know they were studying brahma sutras together with a guru there were only three students and then uh, this 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 one was always he, he was also a swami a young swami at that time and uh, forgotten uh, you know his name doesn't matter but the story is is what is uh, uh, important so this was in the 60s in rishikesh 
So Pujya Swamiji would go along with his friend and then this other man would also join and this this friend would always as soon as the opening mantra was chanted the friend would nod off and go to sleep and when the closing mantra was chanted he would wake up and then again you know it was it fell to Pujya Swamiji's lot to give him the gist of the lecture as they were walking back to their kutiya <laughs> he would give him the gist of today's lecture what did the teacher teach you know what 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 did what did i miss this is what happened and pujya swami ji did it very very happily because you know this is what this is what was you know uh, he he thought it as an opportunity to deepen his own understanding but look at the teacher's compassion and patience the teacher first of all said let him sleep because sleep is because of his good karma <laughs> no need to wake him up but then the teacher waited for about 18 months allowing him to sleep and snore you know if there is a class of 100 people or even 50 people one person and the person in the middle sitting right in front of you you know do this and you kudos to the teacher swami tarananda ji you know again a very ancient uh, teacher and uh, he put up with it he put up with it for 18 months and then one day he said he woke him up and said ye sunne ki baat hai sone ki baat nahi hai you know this is not a matter of sleeping this is a matter for this the subject matter is for listening that's all he said by way of chiding him you know so this is a this is a prarabdha this is a pratibandha this is an obstacle because that student who who always fell asleep in class you know was was very earnest well was extremely sincere but somehow he you know there was some but the body would not cooperate it's a body pratibandha mind pratibandha sudden distractions not able to focus not able to you know the dharana shakti grahana shakti is not there uchcharana shakti is not there the ability to grasp is not there the ability to talk about what has been grasped is not there so many things come in the way and therefore these are all because of previous adrishtas previous invisible karmas coming out and therefore i unleash a new set of karma in order to take care of this obstacles so that you know i don't go away from this knowledge because sometimes you know people get angry with the teacher and go away like virochana did in the chandogya upanishad he got upset and went left or he thought he had he got wrong knowledge and left sometimes people get upset and leave before the knowledge takes place and so now what do we want we want to be uh, 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 you know we have want to have a single minded focus to be with the teaching uh, you know until this knowledge takes place without doubt error or vagueness that is what we want and so therefore what do we do we make sure that we clean everything we clean out the residual karma through conscious action of invoking the uh, you know um, invoking bhagwan in a little altar it doesn't have to be elaborate invoking bhagwan and then this is what is daily worship and this daily worship becomes a form of inner shaucham a kind of you know because you have what is that you have soap for the body to clean the body because when you go out it catches dust and it catches grime and all these things and these days it has you can uh, you know touch something and have the virus on the hands and then what do you do after coming home you have to wash for 20 seconds you know you have to wash wash the hands till they fall off this is what you have to do this is what is called outer shaucham there is all kinds of upayas there is uh, what is that called there is soap and cleansers antibacterial cleansers all that is there what do you do for the mind this is a very important thing that is where puja comes in you know navarina shuddhyati antaratma what a lovely you know saying there is in sanskrit not by water is the inner instrument you know is what not by water the is the inner instrument cleansed meaning the mind is not cleansed by water it is cleansed by prayer this is what the prayer is the soap rama nama then any nama that you take the nama is the soap and you know 
this is what the whole you know this is what uh, this is what cuts the cord of samsara and repeated births to you know uh, to to you know to eke out all these to exhaust these karmas because what you want is the knowledge that falsifies the agent of doing and when the agent is falsified the karma is all falsified and that is what one wants one wants to be with the teacher one wants to study without a gap and for this reason the mumukshu the jignasu's prayer is may i you know see the other end of this knowledge may i not go away you know half understanding everything just half and half that is not a good thing so this bhakti is to cut the cords of adrishta all the karmic cords that are coming from previous lifetimes and difficult and chronic patterns are cut with the help of you know the, the these pujas etc or parayanas very very important and then you know bhakti also towards the pursuit bhakti means a commitment so a committed devotee one becomes of bhagavan and along with that the second meaning of bhakti is that there is a committed pursuit Vedanta is a committed pursuit it is not aya ram gaya ram and you cannot just sort of tell yourself kabhi kabhi mere dil mein vedant ka khayal aata hai that that doesn't work once in a while i think of vedanta that doesn't work there should be a committed exposure that's how it is it grows on you in the beginning you like it a little bit you like what you hear you are at least excited to hear more and then you know it grows on you and then this way you allow it to grow on you and so the bhakti towards the pursuit bhakti that's why bhaja seva yam seva here is commitment a commitment towards the pursuit a commitment towards self growth this is also bhakti bhakti is also you know translates into karma in the form of karma yoga finally we have to see that bhakti translates in the form of karma yoga you know karma done with the idea of self growth so if one is a seeker of brahman then what happens you know you are not interested in anything else no but i am interested in many things yes but that, that's why we have the two options one is to take sanyasa right away and which many people don't want to do you know no problem that's okay and so what is the other option karma yoga that's a, a committed lifestyle to gain this knowledge it's not karma marga no it is karma yoga you know karma marga can, it can be confused with you know just people who do karma for the sake of getting some results but here it is a yoga karma eva yoga karma which joins you to ishvara and only in this tradition can we have the profound expression work is worship because it is worship fully done the attitude with which i do the work is worship fully done i see you know i i don't see myself i practice dropping the do worship by consciously invoking ishvara as an agent of the uh, the action that's why if you go to anybody's house in india and you praise their cooking you praise their house you know they will not say thank you they will say it's god's grace guru's grace you know elders blessings something like that you know they will say even inside they may be feeling happy but they will say this so this is in the tradition you bring in ishvara as a as a doer you know and then what you say it's because of ishvara is the agent of action i am just an instrument and then what so the results of action we already saw come from who not you ishvara and so what do you have to do you have to get to the place of what is called uh, uh, you know glad acceptance prasada buddhi you have to get to the place of seeing everything as prasada just like when you go to the temple one day you get vada you don't say i don't like sweets and you throw it back <laughs> at the priest no you just say okay this is prasad you go take it like that you you may not like it too much you you know it's hanuman ji's birthday they have made a whole mala of vadas he is wearing them and then it is cut and given to you the whole mala is cut and given to you a garland of vadas vada is some kind of a savory snack 
and this person who you know we are talking about this hypothetical person only likes sweets let us say but then what is offered at the temple is a savory snack but then you take it and you have the the attitude of devotion towards what comes this is a metaphor of accepting whatever comes in life oh but that means i should know the, the karma makes me passive who said that you know you it's a, it's 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 not it that that's so far from the truth it's not the truth at all karma doesn't make you passive karma gives shock absorbers for things out of your control we are not talking of things that you cannot you can control whatever you ca- can control in your life please do you know but we are talking of things that are out of your control chronic patterns difficult emotions you know um papa you know duritas from other lives difficult karma from other lives manifesting right now all these are out of one's control and if they are out of one's control that what other choice do you have other than to accept it gladly g- g- to this is what is growth no other choice in the beginning you moan and groan and grumble a little bit allowed okay theek hai no problem but then after a while you still with it and to say okay you know not now not yet maybe next time maybe another time you know this is what you this is growth and so karma yoga means totally focused on the knowledge and actions are done primarily for self growth not for fulfilling wishes and ambitions this is very important to understand so what does that mean you know that means you know you may be a family person you may be married you may have be having children you may be go having a job all that is okay but then you know you don't make it a point you know uh, what is that you don't you know you 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 give in the more you give in the more you gain this is what it is the more you lose you know in the interactions on the worldly level on the everyday empirical level the more you gain in the form of self growth i was giving this you know i was say, ma- making this point sometime in uh, uh, one time long back in atlanta and then there was a couple uh, then i said in the course of this talk i was giving i said i said you know uh, as a practical tip i can tell people please you know uh, um, don't go for winning arguments try losing an argument especially with the spouse or the significant other and then actually it's a win win situation the spouse is very happy with you oh you agreed so nicely i never thought you would agree <laughs> and then it's a win win situation why because then you know bhagwan is also very happy so you know supposedly because your own self you are focusing on your self growth and you are happy because you have you got self growth very nice so i was telling this in the talk and then two young you know they were married a young couple both of them raised their hands together and then i said yes and they asked the question who should lose the argument first <laughs> so you know this is what it is this is what it is we make small small things into big things every day this is how the whole day gets spoiled you know small things become a huge problem and then you sleep over it and the next day you laugh at yourself why did i lose it yesterday it was such a small thing i could just learn to let go here is where we where we recall uparati letting go titiksha forbearance oh but they are not doing what i want let them not do what you want no but they are you know they are my employee let them be your employee actually they are ishwara's employee not yours you know tell them you know you have so many choices review your choices tell them well you know that will create a, i have tried telling them but it's of no use that will create more problems okay you know fire them hire somebody else no no who who will you find they are really good at what they do okay option 3 keep quiet <laughs> keep quiet do whatever needs to be done tell them again slowly and then you know see what happens let's see how it unfolds and keep quiet in the face of the understanding that actually ishwara is running pray 
Keep quiet means re resort to bhakti here. So, so many options are there. And in, in any case, in any situation, you know, one day one option, another day another option may be more uh, appropriate. This is, this is what the, you know, human life is. It doesn't come with an instruction booklet. In this situation, do this. You know, troubleshooting. You know, what to do if the spouse doesn't listen to me? What to do if this is not, you know, being done? What to do if I have mother issues or father issues? There is no instruction booklet. Life is lived. And in this expression, if one is a devotee, one learns to accept things that one cannot change. In fact, that is the serenity prayer. Oh Lord, allow me the grace to accept the things that I cannot change. And the wisdom to know the difference between the things I can change, between the battles I can and should be fighting, and between those I should not even touch with a 10-foot pole. That's what it is. And if you are confused, pray for clarity to be before acting. This is what we would say. And so this is what is the mental soap. So this is in a, in a way a bahiranga sadhana. Bahiranga sadhana. Bhakti is a bahiranga sadhana because it relies on karma for its expression. Karma is bahiranga means an outward relies on action for its uh, expression and so then you have karma yoga where you are out and about in the world you are interacting with people you are be, you are growing into a compassionate accommodative non-reactive non-demanding person this is what Ashwalayana was and Ashwalayana is told to become all this before gaining the knowledge this is what is needed to qualify for this knowledge otherwise this knowledge will not come you may have the best teacher. You may have Lord Brahma Ji come and teach you. This very Upanishad. But nothing will happen. Why? Because there is no preparation. The prerequisites have not been met. And so this is, you know, this is how one grows. This is what is called Bahiranga Sadhana. A sad an outwardly focused Sadhana where you are practicing non-reactivity. You want to say something to them, but you, you, you know it's not worth it. And so you keep quiet. You're p practicing accommodation. Yes, they've done a bad job, but maybe they're having a bad day. Let me let it go and let's see tomorrow what happens. And then, you know, and you're growing into a compassionate person. You're able to see what is going on. And all that is more important than having your way, which is just the way of the ahankara. For five minutes you are shining in your glory and you have, you know, made everybody count out to you and uh, dominated over them for ten minutes. This is not, this is not a win-win situation. In fact, one is a double loser. One loses out preparing for Vedanta and one loses out in that situation also because there is so much bad taste in your mouth and the other people's mouth as well as a result of this interaction and so therefore you know this 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 karma yoga is very important because it's a form of bhakti it's an uh, it's a manifestation of how to live in the world and not be afflicted by it in the everyday life this is what is called bahiranga sadhana and the sadhana is this you know karma yoga is for chitta shuddhi Chitta Shuddhi means the soap that cleanses. Karma Yoga is the soap that cleanses the mind and rids it of strong preferences, strong prejudices. <coughs> and then, uh, you know, where all of them settle down, they lose their bite and it rids it of, uh, what is that called? The uh, Kama, Krodha. You know, Kama, we've already said, Raga Dvesha constitute Kama. Krodha, anger, lobha, avarice, greed, and then uh, moha, delusion, you know, subjectivity, mada, um, arrogance, and then finally, matsarya, jealousy. All these are examples of difficult emotions that need to be mastered, that need to be conquered. So this is what is, you know, this, this is what is called chitta shuddhi where the heart is cleansed of these emotions as a result of prayer and action you know where the prayer is 
uh, you know where you you grow from being a person who prays to becoming an a prayerful person a prayerful person is the one whose attitude towards anything that one does is one of worship this is what the whole thing is this is what is called bahiranga sadhana and outward focus for self growth then finally we have the last word dhyana this is antaranga sadhana meditation dhyana means meditation it is antaranga sadhana an inward based sadhana an inward focus inward means to understand <coughs> the truth of oneself uh, to pre- sorry to prepare oneself to understand the means you know uh, to uh, to to gain a say over the mind so a uh, bahiranga sadhana like karma yoga ritualized worship puja etc gives what the prasada called chitta shuddhi a heart that is not always you know in in a constant turmoil conflict and discontentment that is the heart that is ready for vedanta where the virochanas the asuras the rakshasas the demons you know have all been driven away through a, a you know th- through the person becoming humble becoming a devotee and then the antaranga sadhana here is for what is called chitta naischalyam nischalasya bhava nischala means an unmoving mind otherwise the mind is always moving <laughs> a fact that was not lost on arjuna chanchalam hi mana krishna he complains pramathi balavat dridam tasyaham nigraham manye vayo riva sudushkaram he says this in the middle of the 6th chapter where he is being taught about meditation by lord uh, krishna and he complains what are you talking about the mind is so you know uh, what is that is such a if, uh, you know it is it, it it flits from thought to thought it's such a fleeting thing it doesn't even sit for one second it's it's worse than a butterfly at least the butterfly sits on a flower for long enough for you to see and admire the design on its wings but this mind doesn't even sit for a second it's restless chanchala and then pramathi it is stubborn dridam it has a mind of its own that's why it's called you know the only thing we can say about the mind is never mind i it's out of my hands you know i can't do anything about this and then you say oh grasp the mind oh arjuna how to grasp it if you give me the task of going out outdoors and getting a fist full of air i'll happily bring it to you i can bring you the air in a fist you know and then give you here here is that that is easier accomplished than what you are asking me to have a uh, say over the ways of the mind this is not mind control you can't control you can just say having a say over the ways of the mind very very difficult and then lord krishna agrees yes it is chanchala yes i understand but he gives an upaya he gives a parihara he gives a solution and what is the solution he gives two words which are very beautiful wonderful abhyasena tu kaunteya vairagyena cha grihyate yes the mind is is stubborn yes the mind is restless yes the mind is fleeting from thought to thought but uh, there are two three ways in which you can conquer the ways of this mind and how what what are those two things one is abhyasa another is vairagya abhyasa means repetition you know and that's why in dhyana what do we say we repeat om namah shivaya <laughs> you know this is what so the thoughts you know the thoughts go in a random sequence and even though we say there is no rhyme or reason you know there there is rhyme and reason some that there is reason which may not be known and there's definitely sometimes there is rhyme you know why because the fellow thought you know uh, saw a honda on the street and then immediately he thought of bonda bonda is a fried snack which tastes very good you know in the rainy season and so why honda and bonda rhyme simple is very many many times this happens there is some kind of a rhyme there a hidden rhyme 
and th there is also a reason why it goes the uh, you know the mind leapfrogs from thought to thought to thought you think it leapfrogs but there is some logic there there is a reason there that is not known to you it is hidden from you and so therefore what so therefore here you know the mind is put on a diet of the mantra received from the teacher then you receive the mantra from the teacher and then you put the mind on the mantra diet and you say okay i'm going to sit for 10 minutes or 5 minutes whatever however much you are comfortable with in the beginning i'm going to just chant the mantra the mind what does the mind says you are right go ahead i have my own thoughts you know pun intended i have my own fantasies i have my own thoughts that i'm going to think you keep chanting the mantra good luck you know mind doesn't cooperate that's why abhyasa om namo bhagavate vasudevaya these are all not just made up mantras these are all mantras ancient mantras given to rishis by other rishis and given by bhagavan all these things are there om namo bhagavate va, you know dakshina murtaye om namo bhagavate vasudevaya om aim hrim shrim klim dum durga yai namaha you know this is this is all ancient mantras and they have they have they they have they have power because all the people in the tradition have been chanting them all the gurus have been chanting them and the gurus give it to the shishyas and the shishyas then become gurus and give it and it, it's uh, it's an endless chain so the mantra has power and then you chant once the mind says okay okay i'll go along with it what what is that it sounds interesting Om Namo Om Namah Shivaya Om Isha Ga Namaha Okay I'll say that once you know that's why it's a mental exercise manasam karma dhyanam so the mental exercise is the subject matter of which is Ishvara that's why it is a form of worship so man so if the mind says okay I'll humor the mind and the hankara now the ego are great friends and the mind says okay I'll humor this person Okay Om Namah Shivaya what should be the next thought Om Namah Shivaya oh no i have to do this again all right fine you know the person is not letting me see a movie the person is making me sit here all right i will say it one more time in my mind Om Namah Shivaya Om Namah Shivaya and then what oh i wonder what's what's playing there i wonder what's happening over there i wonder who is you know who is on facebook I haven't uh, I wonder what's happening over there all these you know distractions come that the distractions come is not the problem the problem is to go along with the distraction so when the distraction comes you have to catch hold of the mantra the mantra becomes the rope you know for the mind that is falling off this this cliff so you catch hold of the mantra and pull yourself back you know again om namah shivaya Om Namah Shivaya whatever the mantra is you know i'm just using om namah shivaya because it's short om isha ga namaha and sometimes even you can say om namaha om is the name of bhagavan that too is a mantra and so om namaha om namaha om namaha beautiful and so this is abhyasa and the more one does this abhyasa when the man is immersed the chanter and the chant become one in fact they are one they are the same consciousness out of which the chanter as an entity recognizes himself herself and the chant as an object is also recognized as a result of which who which who is not as the result of you know understanding which consciousness which is neither the chanter nor the chanted nor the process of chanting which is free of all three and then but which is which sustains everything without being any one thing this is very big and this is what is you know this is what is one part of this what we call dhyana abhyasa abhyasa is you know having a say over the ways of the mind by repeatedly putting them on a diet of mantra a discipline a mental discipline of replacing the random thoughts that mechanically go from one thing to another with the name of bhagavan repeatedly 
and if distractions come you replace it again you go back again and again and again and do this this is what is called abhyasa and then lord krishna also says the another thing vairagya and what is vairagya we already saw a little bit vairagya in the earlier class and the you know in the the the, the, the class on the qualifications um yesterday we saw that and so vairagya here means you know letting go the more one uh, identifies as a devotee the less one is bothered by the things that are happening in the world because you know what the truth is you can never make the world into something perfect because it's already perfect it may not be perfect for you but it is perfect in the way it is manifest sthane it is exactly how it should be it is exactly how it you know how it is made including corona virus for the certain kind of transformations to take place perhaps we were asking when will the avatar come you know bhagwan promised in fourth chapter i you know yada yada hi dharmasya glanir bhavati bharata whenever there is neglect and dereliction of ethics and dharma and morality i will come perhaps you know this corona virus is bhagwan it's an avatar it is amazing it really really amazing and so you know this is this is what the whole thing is to be able to see this as ishvara to be able to see everything as the lord isha vasyam idam sarvam yat kincha jagatyam jagat this is the opening words of the isha isha upanishad very very beautiful and so therefore you know we have to uh, we have to look at this vairagya from the standpoint of this whole universe and your own place in it you can do only so much whatever you can do you do with a full heart let it go you know don't we, we don't become a micro managers you can suggest something and the other person also has free will they may not do it very likely they will not do it and then what you know either you do it yourself or you let it go why i can browbeat them and bully them yes you can do that but then you can't do that and then also be a desirer of this knowledge if the those two things cannot happen at the same time the person who wants this knowledge will learn to conduct themselves very differently than the average person who the you know who who is not interested in this knowledge and it's not easy to qualify for this knowledge who will have shraddha bhakti dhyana yoga very difficult very very difficult because you know as the bhaja govindam laments you know which is you know bhaja govindam muses which is the bhaja govindam is a text very beautiful text attributed to adi shankara and then uh, there you know the writer muses uh, which is a good time which is a good place which is a good way to uh, to study about brahman you know but which is the good age group maybe we should start them young as a, a small child you know the child can be taught tatvamasi no why balas tavat krida sakta because the child is obsessed with play oh maybe young age because the mind is sharp young adult tarunastavat taruni rakta the young adult is happens to be interested in only one thing what is that another young adult <laughs> that's all no other thing no other thing vedanta will not go into the head oh now i know why our elders said you have to retire and you have to finish all your quote unquote duties and then go and then sit in front of the teacher you know provided you can still sit at that age okay yeah and then you know and then uh, uh, maybe that's what it is one prasthis or you know this is what is that this, this is the age retirement age and then bhaja govindan says vriddhastavat chinta magna you know so the vriddha is always worried will the people how will i die will it be a short quick affair will i get corona or will i you know will i just uh, you know will i linger for a long time in bed 
now that will be terrible but then you know if i just pop off suddenly i will not have time to say goodbye so be very difficult which to choose and how will my children behave will they still remember me after i'm gone will they do or as i say will they you know fight over the property these are the worries okay yesterday one more muscle went today i'm having a pain somewhere else this is what is the obsession of the elderly person and then the author laments in the last line pare brahmani ko pina lagna nobody is interested in para brahma nobody is interested in brahman not easy that's why this work is 9 tenths of the knowledge is preparation 1 tenth is the knowledge gaining the knowledge so therefore the more shuddhi antakarana shuddhi and chitta naishchalyam because you want to be able to listen without the mind draw, you know you know going off somewhere playing hooky and going off somewhere and then you know you know like that person in the chandogya upanishad who ended up who was you know who couldn't see and who ended up in a watch tower of the palace he had come for some kind of a function in the palace ground some fair and then he was just saying i'm lost i'm trapped in this tower and he came to the sentry the sentry said your village is on the other side this is this is the road to the you know inside the palace you don't want to go here but you want to go to the other opening oh but i can't see the light is falling what should i do and he says you know he takes him and puts him on against the wall just keep feeling the wall it's this watch tower is Round, and then after a while you'll run out of wall no more wall and then what will happen then you know the opening has come and then you go and then this fellow turns up again after half an hour you know blinking and saying oh revered sir can you please show me the way to my village i live here what are you again i showed you half an hour ago what happened no i did it oh it's you okay i just kept doing what you said but there was no opening he says impossible i see the opening right from where i'm standing did you ever take your hands off the wall yes you know i had a little bit of an itch so i scratched myself when he scratched himself and he kept on walking that was the moment the opening was missed this is what happens if the mind is all over the place you know panchadashi kara uh, with the swami vidyaranya says this that you know that fantasy and vedanta don't go together whether they are positive fantasies day dreaming manorajya or negative fantasies that frighten you they don't go together but that's why this chitta naishchalyam is the gift of dhyanam chitta shuddhi is the gift of other forms of bhakti talked about you know earlier and and then of course we have already seen shraddha so shraddha bhakti dhyana yogad avehi he is told and then later on the you know the text goes into one more thing to gain uh, as a qualification the text thinks the upanishad says that you you have to become a sanyasi or close to a sanyasi have complete vairagya and vairagya is highlighted in the next mantra which i hope some other time we can uh, it's a, it's also a beautiful mantra na karmana na prajaya na dhane na etc sometime we can perhaps you know bhagavan will give us the opportunity to study that thank you very much om tat sat i'll say the closing prayer om purnamada purnamidam purnat purnamudachyate पूर्णस्य पूर्णमादाय पूर्णमेवशिष्य ओं शाति 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 हरि ओं श्रीगुरुभ्यो नम हरि ओं थैंक यू स्वामीनी जी अगेन फॉर वेरी वंडरफुल वेरी सो मच फूड फॉर थॉट आई शुड से वी हैव फ्यू क्वेश्चन i think eight to nine questions are there yeah i'll be brief can we go a little over if needed yes yes definitely okay, okay. Yeah. yeah so what is shatarudriyam 
Shatarudriyam is a, is a mantra in the Yajurveda, uh, both in the Krishna Yajurveda and the Shukla Yajurveda it comes and then it is a, uh, you know, it is uh, what I was talking about, it is a prayer to Bhagavan in the form of Rudra, uh, you know, uh, Ru, uh, Ru stands for Rudanam, the one that makes you cry and then Rodayati uh, and then Rudanam Dravayati first makes you cry and then when you <laughs> when you cry then gives you a hanky to wipe your eyes so this is Rudra you know and then uh, so this is uh, a beautiful you know uh, what is that it's it's actually fully Vedanta it's it's a beautiful prayer very very nice I hope you have the chance to study it sometime uh, does the Veda describe the geographical location where uh, Brahma resides, where in the solar system or the cosmos and how do the physical body of the saint went up to Brahma, whether there is any description of the Sukshma Sharira? No, this Upanishad doesn't go into that. The Akhyaika is simply that Lord Brahma ji is, is invoked as the teacher and Ashvalayana is put as the student for obvious reasons so that this knowledge is authenticated and this knowledge is validated for all of us who are doubting Thomas's especially in Kali Yuga. So therefore we need we need to trust this knowledge and it's helping our Shraddha to see that these are sages. Since it's a story we don't you know there is no location. Yeah. There is no location, there is, you know, Brahma Loka, all these things are not, you know, it's not the purport of the Upanishad to focus on the geographical location. The purport is to make you understand that you are all pervasive and you are, you know, free of, uh, you know, you are free of all afflictions and uh, mortality. And then Sushma, this is how we, that, that way, same way we can wonder, how did Nachiketa go to Lord Yama, correct? His father said, Lord Yama, how did he go? And uh, and that also is a very interesting question. We don't know how he went, but the question is he went. That's all we need to know. You know? Yeah. Because it doesn't discuss. The Upanishad is a lady of few words. It doesn't, uh, you know, she doesn't talk about all these things. She goes straight to the point. Yeah. Upanishad is female. Okay? Yeah. That's why. Source of knowledge always female. Now, starting with the mindful praying mantra chanting soon it becomes unmindful how to make this mechanical practice mindful stop yeah when you when you understand it becomes mindless stop get up go have a drink of water go jump up and down do whatever you need to do run a small errand take a walk come back wash your face come back sit down again you know that is that is the only way to you know to do that a little more clarification on dharma. Dharyate iti dharma, that which upholds everything. Dharma is a universal matrix of norms which cannot be enforced. And the only way to enforce it is to practice it yourself. That's why in English it is called the golden rule. It is known as the golden rule. And the golden rule means that, you know, you have a, uh, what is that, you know, you don't do unto others as you don't want them to do unto you. This is what is dharma, you know. And then, uh, killing harmful germs is himsa. How do we uh, justify the use of insecticides and chemicals to keep them away? Yeah, killing harmful germs is in himsa and why, you know, why insecticides? Even just, even regular sweeping and mopping your house, you know, every day, that also kills so many germs that are not even visible to the naked eye. So there are, you know, different ways where it, the, 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 this is what is called pancha papa. Pancha papa means these five, uh, uh, you know, accruing of five difficult uh, karmas through the everyday things, you know. Uh, what are they? They are sweeping, mopping things. Marjanam is sweeping and mopping. And then, uh, you know, what is that? Uh, peshanam, you know, because in the olden days they used to, uh, this thing, the grain, uh, pound the grain. You know, peshanam, pounding the grain. And when you pound the grain, so many things may be there. And everybody who is non-vegetarian may become, uh, who is vegetarian may become non-vegetarian. We don't know. But, you know, you pound the grain, that pounding, sweeping, 
washing the washing the clothes washing the vessels all these things you know washing outside all these things you know kill a lot of things so for this pancha papa there are the nitya karma is the prayas chitta the atonement because some things you cannot help you cannot coexist with insects and you know harmful things like that and so you have to keep you know you you try to use herbal things you try to escort them out of the house and then if you inadvertently kill them you do some prayas chitta by you know giving up something you like or through prayer through everyday prayer okay yeah then uh very difficult to assimilate and plan to put it into practice request you to suggest as a lifestyle and a discipline which will lead us to self realization you know this is what it is the lifestyle is karma yoga and that is what we have ta- talked about at length today karma yoga means you allow the you know you 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 do whatever you do you do it for the sake of this knowledge or for the and or for the sake of self growth and then you winning small battles and then wanting something it doesn't matter you set your eyes on the on the big prize and then that is what the whole thing is that that is the lifestyle that is the only lifestyle that prepares one for knowledge and then you keep listening and you say it is difficult and yes it, it may look difficult in the beginning because one is not used to thinking like this one is not used to paying so much attention and uh, so you know uh, they, therefore it is uh, difficult to uh, what is that you know uh, it is difficult in the beginning but you keep with it the persever- perseverance is the key that is the the, the biggest key in fact the the recently one more rover went to mars from nasa and it's called perseverance rover and, uh, and that's what everybody needs to become rover rover means seeker and perseverance perseverance is tithiksha keep with it keep with it and one day you you will you know it will it will uh, re- it will reward you yeah email phone number nitin can give can you please type my email for people who want yeah that will be nice um i have gone from one guru to another organization and i find i don't give my entire shraddha to one some have a lot of puja some chanting some kriya i love to listen to discourses and reading the text i take some learning from each guru and select the practice i prefer i don't think this is right please guide well you know right now it may not be right or it may not be wrong let's not make make a judgment on it right now this is what it is and there are reasons for that and i you know and this is a good place i mean i i uh, commend you for being so candid and being you know to be able to talk about this amazing you you are really amazing so you have obviously a lot of done a lot of self reflection on it and introspection so you are a, clearly a serious seeker and an introspective one and i wish you the best i you know but right now the only thing to do is to accept that this is how it is and there is a reason for it and you know and he, he, you can look at the reason from the past to see that if there was any kind of an instability in the past experiences as a child that could also come in the way of sticking to one particular you know mode of being and uh, so but right now it's okay every guru is a, is a blessing every teacher is a blessing you keep listening to whoever you know you you would like to listen to and then a day will soon come where all this all these difficulties will just you know go away will they will it will go away and then uh, i i will pray that that day comes very soon and you find your life's purpose uh, fully blessed with with shravanam okay yeah then another one atma agnana atma agnana and anyatha grahanam is the cause of uh, bondage and self knowledge is the only antidote yeah not anecdote antidote i think you mean to say uh, karma yoga gives chitta shuddhi please explain about how and where does bhakti fit in 
Yeah, karma yoga is done through bhakti. It's not a separate thing. Bhakti, even though you see, Swami, uh, what was uh, Vivekananda, you know, when he was talking about the Vedas to make it simple for the people, he you know split them into uh, two more margas bhakti marga raja you know bhakti yoga raja yoga hatha yoga all these things became you know they don't have upanishadic parlance they don't they are not mentioned in the upanishad upanishad which, which are our primary texts only talk about two parts one is you know karma yoga and then the other one is jnana yoga jnana yoga means you you drop everything you burn all bridges and you just stand in front of the sky and the trees and say I give this all up for the sake of knowledge and we don't have in our tradition we don't have monasteries upkeeping us we don't have anybody giving you know a monthly stipend nothing it's just you and the sky the Swami and the sky that's all it is whatever comes you 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 live on that that is you know that is what that is what the whole thing is so then uh, uh, that that must be understood and then uh, the uh, other one if one is not ready to burn the bridges and the boats one has to go through what is called karma yoga which is a disciplined life for chitta shuddhi and the karma yoga is nothing but bhakti jnana is nothing but bhakti jnana yoga is also bhakti because it is a, the, the topic here is ishvara and so the devotion is common to both we don't see devotion in the traditional sense as a separate you know path because as i mentioned in the lecture also that the uh, devotion uh, finds its expression through karma through action so the devoted action is called karma yoga so then that is where bhakti is bhakti is to 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 uh, understand the source of one's frustration where to take that frustration and the pain and the sorrow you take it to bhagavan leave it at the feet of bhagavan that is what is bhakti without that there is again no preparation no chitta shuddhi okay yeah uh, i hope that was clear now how important is it to know the meaning of mantras we chant you know will one still be able to reap the benefits by chanting without knowing the meaning yes yes because these are ancient mantras and they have you know they 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 have their own history and uh, they yes you can do that uh, but if you want to know the meaning then it is even more efficacious because you can recall the meaning as you are chanting it next one you said that interested the uh, interested in vedanta is karma but not having concentration is also karma so what is the use of a beneficial circumstances uh, which we are not able to use does it mean ishvara's grace is not powerful no <laughs> it means that we need to use our free will a little more ishvara's grace is there we have to tap into it Ishvara's grace is like an underlying, you know, water, underground water. You have to dig. Yeah, sometimes you have to dig deep. The water will then come out as a spring. That is Ishvara's grace. You have to earn the grace. And earning the grace means, you know, uh, using your free will for the concentration, for, for perseverance, for, for the committed pursuit. Very, very important and you know and using all the things all the tricks that one has udyamam udyamam sahasam dhairyam buddhish chaktif parakramah shadete yatra vartante tatra devas sahaya krit so your participation this this sukta says uh, what is that udyamam hard work put the right effort at the right time sahasam enthusiasm dhairyam you know courage buddhihi all mental resources shaktihi physical resources parakramaha the ability to take the project to the end whatever work you are doing shadayate yatra vartante where these six things reside tatra devaha sahaya krit there only the god lends a helping hand yeah Zishwara's grace is very powerful he is waiting for you to step up that's what is happening does a karma yogi has to necessarily be a grahastha if they are not really ready for sannyasa no need no need 
you don't have to be a grahastha yeah, if you are not ready for sannyasa you can just continue to be a karma yogi and do whatever you you, you are doing yeah the shastra is very clear on that yeah then durga mantra request om aim hrim klim shrim dum durga yai namaha so i'll type it i think i can type it here om aim hrim klim dum durga yai namaha very effective to chant in the age of the corona virus because it is it is durga it is the, it is the, in the form of durga you know yeah i pressed send did it come nitin did it come the chat box has been disabled i think that no, is no i didn't di- do it in the chat box i did it in the question only okay then it would have gone it, yes it should have come okay yeah, yes, yes yeah yes. okay thank you very much thanks to everyone thank you again swamini ji um um the whole uh, weekend was uh, very uh, fantastic and uh, i have no words to describe and we it, we have all been very fortunate to have this online uh, listen to this online shravanam and uh, understand the meaning of kaivalyam i think uh, this is the beauty of uh, vedanta that even a single word can uh, uh, you know hold within it the entirety of knowledge a just single word can convey the whole infinite number of meanings uh, So thank you very much for uh, thank you Nitin and thank you for uh, you know being a captive audience I made you into a captive audience It's Om Namah Shivaya It's my fortune for fortune uh, Swami ji uh, viewers with this we come to the conclusion of this session this this week's weekend with wisdom uh, next week we will invite another guest for taking weekend classes uh check uh, advaita academy's website for for uh, the uh, online classes that we are running continuously and for announcements for next week's uh, events thank you shri guru bhyo namaha om om thank you thank you to everyone all the best <laughs>